So in this video, we're going to be looking specifically at how the EA888 has evolved, particularly over the Gen 2 engine, and why we should regard it as a completely different engine from its predecessors. So when the EA888 Gen 3 was initially released, a lot of people were criticizing it and saying it was less reliable than its predecessors. They probably based that on the fact that it's lighter, that there's inherent problems with new generations of engines that come out. Some people are quite cynical, but that reputation really hasn't borne out in time. So as time has progressed, we've actually seen that these engines have been supremely reliable, that the faults that people expected to crop up indeed haven't actually cropped up. So why was the EA888 actually released and revised with this generation 3? Well emissions regulations primarily were the driving force behind this revision. A lot of the engine's design has been aimed at improving its efficiency and meeting emissions regulations. So the Euro V or Euro 5 regulations are some of the most stringent emissions regulations currently around and the EA888 was designed to exceed those emission standards giving the Volkswagen Group a little bit of leeway and it is a very efficient, very clean burning engine. So what has changed between the Gen 3 and the Gen 2 versions of this engine? Well, they've reduced the engine weight, so a big weight saving has been achieved there. Internal friction of the engine has been reduced. That's something that creates all sorts of problems with heat buildup in the engine. It really hits the oil hard and creates a much harder job for the oil to do to lubricate everything just because it's running so much hotter. And you've obviously got the loss of efficiency because those internal engine components are trying to overcome the friction that's built up inside them. They've also made the engine far more modular than its predecessors, so it's cheaper to manufacture, it's quicker to manufacture. That does present a few problems to us as aftermarket tuners and modifiers because you tend to have to do the whole unit, like the head, you've not got the bolt-on components that you would have had with the older generations of engines. So I'm thinking particularly about the exhaust manifold. That's no longer a bolt-on part. That's incorporated into the head itself. So some of the gains you may have made by increasing the airflow out of the engine, it's no longer an easy option without removing the head and completely remachining what the Volkswagen Group have done. But they have done a reasonably good job in setting this engine up. So another benefit this engine offers is increased torque, increased power, and greater efficiency. So it really does deliver on the performance gains that you would expect from a newer generation of engine, but it improves as well by offering better fuel economy. So it really is giving you the best of both worlds. So it really is a viable engine for most people out there looking for a decent project engine to base their upgrades on. There was revisions obviously made to that Gen 2 over and above the Gen 1. So when we put all of these together, we see that the Gen 3 is far different to that original Gen 1 EA888 engine that came out. The cylinder head and the manifold being combined have really cut down on the weight and the complexity of the engine bay itself. So a significant weight saving obviously translates to better response and better fuel efficiency. The coolant heat up time is much lower. The whole cooling circuit has been designed to reach that optimum operating temperature as quickly as possible. So significant benefits there with efficiency because you're not running around all the time on a cold engine. Exhaust gas temperatures have also been reduced in these designs. So that lessens the load that the turbo has to cope with. The turbo gases are slightly cooler. The EGR system is operating at cooler rates than it used to. Positive crankcase ventilation system now also sports an oil vapour catch system which returns droplets of oil back into the engine rather than dumping that into the intake where you used to have a big problem with carbon buildup. So that's gone some way to reducing the carbon buildup problem. The runner flaps on the intake are much stronger. They're less prone to braking like they would have done on the earlier versions of this engine, which was a bit of a pain. The ignition coils are an all new style so there was a lot of problem on the early engines having ignition coil pack problems and those were ironed out really when they went from the generation 2 and then up to the generation 3 engine design. We also see dual fuel injection so into the port and also directly into the cylinder so again that improves the efficiency of the engine but it helps to reduce the carbon buildup because you've now got periods of time where fuel is being squirted onto the back of the valve so that is helping to clean the carbon buildup from those valves. It had a steel crankshaft fitted to it. The oil pump, the pistons, the rings, and also balancing shafts were added. So all these things were upgraded and improved on this version of the engine. The exhaust manifold is now water-cooled, which allows the engine to warm up 
quicker, but also reduces a lot of the problems you would have had with hot exhaust gases going through the turbo, for example. You've still got a timing chain driving the camshaft. The AVS system is employed on the intake valves, but both camshafts use variable valve timing systems. So the need to get placement camshaft is certainly not something you'd be looking to do on the Gen 3 engine, um, mainly because the head is just one unit, but also because of the complexity of the variable valve timing system, you just don't need the performance cams to get the maximum performance out of these engines. So this direct injection engine now boasts around about 1.3 bars or 18.8 PSI of pressure. There were quite a few different turbo units employed on the EA888 engine. Swapping turbos from the lower powered variants to the higher powered variant turbos is a fairly easy upgrade path. So it saves you from having to go out and buy off the shelf performance upgrade. You can just go to your local breaker shard and get off the shelf parts on the used market. The high performance variants of this engine typically had the CJX engine code attached to them. These boasted a slightly modified cylinder head. The intake camshaft was a higher performance camshaft, so the durations were slightly different to the stock one. The exhaust valves were larger. They had a 9.3 to 1 compression ratio. They had new pistons. The injectors were beefed up much more effective, and there was a higher pressure fuel pump used to drive this fuel system. The brain of the engine is now a Siemens ECU, the Siemens 18.1, and that offered enough processing power to allow the engine to meet those ever more stringent emissions regulations. So I really hope this video has been useful to you. Please boot that like button because that helps us to get out there. Let us know which engine you've got, which car you've got. That'll help me to tailor future videos so that I can cover the topics that are of interest to you. Please subscribe if you haven't done so because that really does help us to get out there. And I've lined this video up for you that you should find interesting if you just want to get a bit more power out of your engine reliably.